Hi guys, so today's episode, it will be about a detailed dive into the TCP dump tool. Now, learning about this tool is very important for network troubleshooting and especially for security because you'll be learning what type of information is carried in a packet and how to view them. And this is especially important in creating rules like SNOT and it'll help more in your Wireshark investigations. So I'll show you how I go through the tool. Uh, so when I start with TCP dump, especially in Security Onion, it could have many interfaces. So when I'm actually starting with the TCP dump, I need to know what are the interface that is available in my sniffing machine. So this is Security Onion setup, which is sniffing on these two machines network. So there is one interface dedicated for that one. So how do you find it? So you have to, when you are using TCP dump, you have to use sudo command because it need elevated privileges. And I'm going to use the dash D command. This will show you the interfaces that are running in your console. So according to my previous configuration, this is my sniffing interface. So you can run sudo tcp dump any, which will actually show you all the packets that is coming from any interface, which could be very noisy for a beginner. But if you're hunting in a wide range, it'll be important. But when you're starting, it's better to give a specific interface that you know where the traffic is coming from. You can use any if you don't know the interface. So in my case, I'm going to start dash i and I'm going to say ensp0s3. So this is my interface and I'm going to give verbose output. Remember, then we can see the traffic. Okay. ENP, I'm sorry. No, it's over there. Okay, so I'm listening on the port to generate some traffic. I'm going to ping my other machine. So 192.168.56.102. Yep, you can see the ICMP request and the reply that is coming back. Here and there, you'll be seeing some other traffic also, some ARP traffic over here. To stop this capture, you can always press Ctrl C. So the 32 packages are captured, and here you can see the information. Okay. Right. In order to fine tune this command, you, if you want to like uh, filter out the information that you get, because uh, we are sniffing in uh, this network traffic. For example, currently I'm only looking at the network 192.168.56. You can also specify that to TCP dump like this. Remember, all of this is done to reduce the amount of data, so it will be clear to you what is happening. So I'm going to say, sorry, dot 56.0 slash 24. And again, double V. What this will do is again. Okay. So it could be source IPs or destination IP within that network range that we specified. Okay. Again, if you want to dig in more. Now, we know this network machine is the suspected machine. Just say in your investigation, you suspect that this machine is generating traffic. So if you want to see uh, anything that is coming, for example, if I say host and if I say 101 if you specify host this particular ip could be the source of the destination only this ip so double v and no dot bash so pi it's the same thing you'll get some information over here okay you can also uh, use source and destination that is uh, you can change this to src so it'll only show you where this packet becomes the source. So you'll only see the requests that is coming in. So you can use source destination, you can use and or. Uh, let me show you some advanced methods that you can use over here. For example, you can use TCP dump dash, source is this one, and destination, you can use port. Okay, so I'll share this command and you can actually uh, use this reference to in enhance your searching in TCP dump. Okay, so I think you got the basic idea of how to filter the traffic and what you want to see. Another thing that I want to add over here is you can actually see more data. Even though double V searches, you can be able to see the time, uh, what protocol, source and destination IP, what type of request. If you want to see the inner things, what is inside a packet, if some data will be passed inside the packet. Okay, if you want to see those things. Uh, uh, normally what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something like this uh, instead of the verbose methods I'm going to use a and X so a is for ASCII X is for hexadecimal characters so this will be a familiar view and uh, I'm going to specify this as host okay just to make our thing very clear and yep 
and I'm going to generate some characters. Now, what you see here is actually the, a detailed view of the data that is traveled inside the packet. So it's, this is a ICMP request where it will request uh, to say uh, from the client to send, okay, send, please send me from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and the client will reply with the same data. So this is what is inside uh, ICMP tracker, okay. Good way to find out. So in some attacks we have what we have seen is this particular data could be like uh, you can use ICMP to send some data. So if you want to see those kind of stuff, weird stuff going on, this method would be one of the things that you can use. Okay, right. Now you can see we used A and X. Okay, the next phase what I'm going to do is I take an uh, example of clear text traffic. So in this section, I'm going to open a web server to show you some open web traffic and how you can uh, grab the specified data. Okay, so let's start a web server uh, from here. I'm not going to use Apache, I'm going to use a method that is used by hackers. So let's jump into desktop and I'm, I think I have a program called Web Already Created. So I have three files inside here. So normally what attackers do is if they want to transfer a file, they'll use a small Python script like this. I'll copy and paste over here. Right. I have to use sudo, I'm sorry. Let me make it clear so you will be able to see the files at the same time. So I'll clear. Okay, and let me start. This is a very interesting server if you want a quick server to be run this is already built uh, in Kali if you have Python this sample script is already there so in any machine you can run this server to transfer files. Now what we are going to see here is I'm going to actually uh, change this command I'm going to see uh, check in this interface uh, I can actually specify port 80 this will be interesting because my traffic is on port 80 and I'm going to use Show me all the verbal stuff and I want to see the ASCII characters inside this. Okay, so now we are going to generate some web requests. So I'm going to give my Kali machine's IP, I think I should have IP domain. So there are 56.101 as I can remember. So I just made a request. Okay, and you can see the request is shown over here very clearly. You can see the get request and the use agent where it was taken from and yep yeah, this, that's pretty much of the information that you have and even you can see the initial page that was created for the directory listing now the surprising thing is okay there's a test.html file if i click on that one okay you can see there's a 200 request and i can see contains passwords admin admin yep and you can see the same thing inside the page again this will have a content length and it will have its own get request okay um what use agent was used everything is here right so just say you are looking at some logs that are passed in something like that you can use the grep function to grab more information of this one let me show you what i'm talking about this one now what I'm going to see is I just want to see uh, right what are the files that are requested. For example, get request will show you like what is the page that is requested from the web browser from the client. So this client actually requested this page. If, if I go to an earlier uh, get request, it will be get root. You can see here that is when it showed this particular page directly from root. So if I want to see the get request. Uh, what you can do is so you can add a pipe sign over here and tell grep and I'm going to say ignore case uh, because it could be uh, over here I'm going to copy get okay I don't need to copy this one okay so I'm going to say search for the word get okay and press enter and we'll just make a get request okay and yep that's another page sometimes if caching is enabled you won't be able to see this one that's why I see so you can see what is the things that are requested on this particular pages okay so that will be very clear on what are the requests uh, another thing about grep is like if you want more information you can see 
after the get request we have one two three four five lines of important information or otherwise you can go in more ten lines of important information uh, grep has a nice function called before and after so i can say after you find the grep get show me the next ten lines so if i say dash a i can remember it with capital so i just type capital a okay hope this is not cached okay so you can see all the stuff after that so to get request for there for each page i think so now this is i think it's cache that's why it's not showing so when i go back to the page it will show the important so that's why i'm going to be indicating uh, the root stuff what is the application stuff okay so uh, in grep actually you have before after and those stuff one of them uh, one of my favorite thing is i'm using c so this is it will show you before and after okay I'll just say you you use uh, you are searching for use agent okay uh user dash agent let's give another request over here yeah i think this is cache that's why we don't see anything since i give c files you can see use agent and before and after lines you can see it over here uh, just to show you uh, something interesting i'm going to s create a request from curl to this side now this will be the curl command that is normally used to request the web page and i'm going to give the web page name uh, as request backup.html okay so this is the file i'm going to use and let's see how the request comes over here uh, now you can see a use agent string will be very valuable when you are looking in for malicious requests okay right and finally to close this session I, I think you got the idea of like what to look for what type of things are going on keep this on and you can use multiple filters and uh, just experiment with this one so because it's finally comes into like there's a lot of commands it's how you experiment it and see what's over here so i'll share this in the description window you can go through all the commands these are some of the important stuff uh, another thing is uh, you can use uh, this tcp dump is a good tool to actually capture all the traffics uh, so if i say tcp dump dash w and we can say uh, test cap p cap okay if you don't have a time to like check for example uh, what are the traffic that is going on so oops it's listening on docker well, let's just say to make my life easier I'll say any interface any over here okay so it will capture all the traffic from any interfaces and i'm going to just generate some traffic okay i hope these are not uh, Okay, uh, there. So I'm going to let's let's uh, let's uh, clear the history. So make sure this uh, history is cleared. Okay, and yep, that'll be enough. So if you want to stop the capture, press Control C, and it'll be saved over here. So if I go inside this folder, so I have a pcap file over here. Let me go into my home and if you open this one, this should be opening in Wireshark. All the cap uh, traffic is captured inside here and look for HTTP traffic in our case. So hmm, there's a lot of HTTP stuff going here and there and where's my IP? Yep. So the get request, text files within these things, okay, test.html if you want to follow the TCP stream and you can see, you can see the same traffic files over here. So I hope this was informative and you learned something about uh, TCP dump, okay. Please experiment with uh, this page that I showed you. Go through this one and you can learn a lot and you can Google yourself what are the commands and if you like this video, please your thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this please support me by subscribing